Assalamu alaikum, my name is Elie Bas Ghazmi, I'm 17 years old and I've just finished college and I'm starting uni soon. So growing up in a western country, um, there's a lot of learning to do about Imam Hussein, his story, the sacrifices he made. And growing up as a child, I went to a, a lot of different mosques, Imam Baragas, uh, to form majalises and lectures to find out the story of Imam Hussein and, and just the reason why people mourn him, his sacrifice and, and why he is regarded as one of the most important people in Islam today. So growing up, I have attended a lot of processions over the years for different Muharrams, Arabians, uh, which see a lot of people will come together to express their love and, uh, and their grief for losing their mom. And it's really eye-opening to think that, uh, that without this Imam and his sacrifice, the religion wouldn't be the same today. Uh, so that is something that, that, that I hold there because Imam Hussein fought for what he believed in and, and now all these people Will follow him because of because of his sacrifice, uh, and that is something that is that uh, that makes me love him more. And I'm grand, and so that's why I attended these processions for for him on the day of Ashura or Arba'in, because as you get to learn more about him, you you, you find out just how amazing he was as a person, uh, and the sacrifices he made, the pain he went through. It's something that me or you wouldn't wouldn't necessarily do, but he went through that to save the religion for uh, uh, and to guide us uh, into believing what we believe today and to follow the religion that we follow today. Imam Hussein to me is a pillar of the community because he he sacrificed himself for, for the religion. He saw he saw the path the religion was going down with Yazid as uh, uh, sitting on top and he fought for what he believed in uh, and growing up you don't learn about him in schools or uh, because it is because it's a different culture and society but but you still learn about him in mosques, madrasas, uh, in lectures, uh, majalis, you learn about him and as you learn about him more you find out how to me I've grown to love him more and more because he, uh, because his bravery is something that uh, that I knew that I couldn't uh, that I couldn't do. Stand up in front of thousands of people, a uh, fight for I believe, and that's very tough for or for someone to do. Uh, and he done that without a second thought. He stood up for what he believed in. He fought for his rights. He fought for the religion, uh, uh, knowing that he would uh, that. Uh, that on the day of Ashura, it would be his last day. Uh, and before I went on my trip to, to, to Karbala, uh, I saw Ziyarat as I was going to say salam to, uh, uh, to the Imam or, 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 or whatever you were going, or whatever country you were going to, you, uh, so that like different places. Because, uh, and you would say uh, salam to, to whoever was buried there. And, and the shrine was there. You say salam, you pay your respects, and you come back. That's how I saw it. But after my trip, I saw it's it's a lot more than that because you find out very instantly. It's about building a stronger connection to your imam. So I went to Karbala. Well, for me, it was building a better bond with my religion and and a better bond with my imam because I because I know before I went, I wasn't necessarily like praying all, all, all five times a day uh, it would be sometimes I would but sometimes I wouldn't but when I came back it was very like uh, I would make sure to pray five times a day I'd make sure to do to do what I had to do it I was very more appreciative of of, of my life because I knew without because I understood the reason uh, as to why the Imam done what he done 
uh, and and shaped Islam in, in the way that he did. So so I I appreciate him more. So I myself before uh, before Arabian, I hadn't gone anywhere for Ziyad at, at all, and a lot of people would come back saying that they wanted to go again. They they felt rewarded that they felt lucky to go the uh, they felt changed as a person they were a better person and uh, and that encouraged me to go because i wanted the same thing uh, i wasn't jealous but uh, but i wanted to become a better person myself because because I, I knew that the sins that i'd done in the past that i, I wouldn't want to commit again uh, and people saying after they come back that uh, that they gen that they genuinely feel like they're a better person, and uh, uh, and they're a lot more patient, caring, kind. They're a lot more uh, connected to, to their religion. That, uh, that's what that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to go because I wanted to to come back and be more focused on my religion, and I'm not sin as much as I do. And, and, and to be a better person, you know, just in general. So planning my trip was a bit rough because it wasn't supposed to be me going, it was supposed to be me, it was supposed to be my sister and my brother going. But very last minute, uh, some personal reasons came up for my brother and he couldn't go, therefore, therefore I was told very last minute that, that I was going. So I had no chance to like prep, like read up on uh, on dua surahs and, uh, and stuff that I wanted to because I didn't realise that or because I didn't know that I uh, that I was going to go I, I always thought it would be my brother and my sister so finding out that I was going I was very excited I, I found out one day after after college I come home and, and my mum and my brother were sitting down and they were like um, oh, can you sit down a minute uh, but I thought that I was in trouble and that I had done something wrong uh, and they were like no you can't go uh, it has to be you I was like first off I was like I was very surprised because I, I hadn't planned this at all uh, and I knew that he was very excited towards going he was very like he had planned he had like packed his suitcase he had gone shopping for what items he needed he had Plan for the walk because he's got a special condition with his legs so that he had gone out of his way to plan shoes, clothes, items that that he would need for the walk from Najaf to Karbala and I was very upset for him because because I knew that he couldn't go but that opened up the opportunity for me to go and I was so excited. I, I felt relieved and I felt appreciated that, that my time has come and, and that the, the Imam has called me to come. So the day arrived where it was time to go um, and my brother didn't come, which I didn't like, but, 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 but I knew that he was upset because he couldn't go. And, and so it was an hour and a bit journey to get to Heathrow and, and our flight was a bit delayed. So, so it was just like disappointing because we wanted uh, because it, it was an indirect flight, so it was a flight to Jordan, then to Najaf. And, uh, and we just wanted to go say salam to Imam Ali first. Uh, and, we were, and we were all really excited to go say salam to Imam Ali. So, so, we, uh, so we were all very disappointed. But, uh, but by the time we got on the flight, went to Jordan, uh, then went to Najaf, touched down, the, the, there was a lot of waiting, but uh, but when we got out of the airport, because uh, uh, this, this was my first time being in Iraq myself, uh, uh, I could see the cultural change, how uh, how different things were than the, than the UK and how uh, and how different Iraq was just in general. And so, uh, so we went to our hotel. So Najaf was very hot at the time, but that didn't stop the thousands of people that were there to say salam to Imam Ali. We were all surprised, we were very excited, we were all, because this was my first time saying salam to, uh, to, to a Imam just in general, because it's my first time going on Arba'in or, or, or any sort of ziyarat. And it was, it, it was just, we, we all couldn't wait to go say salam and 
I, I have a, a, and come back, but it was extremely busy. Well, when I went in, I only managed to get to the Zadi for like five seconds before I was dragged away with the rush or, of people going to say salam, and I would go back and join the line again and again, but but I wouldn't be able to touch the Zadi again, and uh, uh, and that really hurt. So the walk from Najaf to Garibala, uh, when I was in the UK, I briefly heard about it. But bear in mind that I didn't know that I was going, so so uh, I hadn't looked up the things that I'd be doing when I was there. So so I so I forgot to uh, to read up on the walk. And uh, and the day we were leaving for Karbala, uh, it was me, my sister, my cousin, and my nan, and we. Uh, and we were all getting off at pole one. We were, we were the only ones in our group of around 30 people to get off at pole one and, and walk from, from Najaf to Garibala itself. Everyone was going straight to Garibala. It was very hot and, and I forgot to pack my bag. So, uh, uh, so I was carrying my sister's bag with all her stuff in it because I didn't know that, uh, that we were going on the walk. So. I hadn't packed a bag, and um, and we set off at a reasonably fast pace. But well, but my nan being very old and uh, and she wanted to complete the walk, we had to set off at a slow pace. Uh, so we started at around 11, 12 in the morning, and we got to that pole 50 at one. Uh, that's the pace we were going at, very slow pace, we were very patient with our nan and, uh, and the heat would get to us but, uh, but we would take little like five, ten minute breaks and get up again, be patient and keep on going. But as the hours kept on going um, and the poles kept on going by, me and my sister, we were like, we want to go, like, we're like, come on, let's go. Like, oh, we'll get to go blind in four days. Like, this is not part of the plan. We're supposed to get there in three days. Let's go. We, we were very impatient towards our nan, and this is something that, that I look back with regret because now I know just how hard it was for her being, being so old and still having to complete that journey. And, and in the heat, uh, and the women had to wear black long abayas and it, uh, I, I can see why it was it, it was tough for her but at the time we we were very like come on let's go me and my sister we were like who have we got to get there come on let's go and that is something that we look back with with regret because it, it was tough for our nan well, but the people of Iraq were very lovely we had so many people well, uh, handing us food, handing us water, uh, 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 some people cleaning our shoes. The, the hospitality there, but by, by everyone for the Azadars of Imam Hussein, is completely unforgettable for, for for a country who who has been in war with uh, with ISIS and uh, and they're still. Uh, of helping the the millions of people walking from Najaf to Karbala, uh, uh, giving them free food, free water, free shelters, free electricity. It, it was something that uh, that I really appreciated because I knew without them people, I wouldn't be able to complete the walk myself. Because if, if there was no food, no shelter, I, I hadn't packed a bag and I hadn't prep to bring food and stuff so so I I wouldn't have completed that journey myself uh, and, and my nan wouldn't have made it at all without the people of Iraq helping us at every step that they could and I, 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 my cousin and my sister couldn't have either and this and it's just we we really appreciated it then but but now looking but now looking back we appreciate it more because without the people we wouldn't have been able to walk from Najaf to Karibala. So on the walk um, I remember this this one specific person who really shocked me and surprised me. Uh, I showed his love for his Imam and to reach Karibala because he had a very injured leg. His right leg was very injured but 
he was walking throughout the night, not throughout the day. He would he, he would rest throughout the day and walk during the night, which which a lot of people done because it, it was a lot cooler uh, uh, and the weather was more. It, it allowed you to walk longer without taking breaks. And he was had crutches, had a bag on, and was just walking really fast for someone who shouldn't necessarily be be walking that fast. This was on the second day. So so the first night, at the start of the second day, he we saw him at around Fajr. Do just that, uh, 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 just walking from Najaf from pole 500 onwards, and uh, uh, we were all really surprised. Uh, at pole 1000, uh, my nan she couldn't, uh, she knew that she couldn't keep on going, and uh, and we knew we were close because there were there were around 1,400 poles in total, but but we knew that that. Uh, uh, that we couldn't push her because she's very old so we had to uh, 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 get a taxi for, for the rest so we drove into Karbala and I remember seeing Imam Hussein's dome for his harem and I wasn't expecting to see that at the time and, and growing up I'd heard so many stories and, and the tale of Imam Hussein and the sacrifices, the, the the journey, the pain he went through, and all of those feelings hit me at once. Seeing his dome and seeing Mullah Abbas's dome further behind, and I, I, I told my family straight away, "Oh, that look over there, you you can see the top." As we kept on going, we just said salam from from a distance, and we we were all very sad, quiet, um, um, my sister was crying, I was very upset myself because I wasn't expecting to, 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 to see uh, Imam's harem straight away. I was, uh, I knew that, that we were going to go to uh, our hotel but I didn't know that the hotel was going to be right next to Abhazad Abbas's harem. We were like 50 metres away from the harem uh, and we were like on the sixth floor so we had an entire view of the harem uh, and, uh, 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 and my nan was very ill so, she, so my sister had to stay back uh, and I got to go say salam whereas she didn't and she was very upset because the first thing she wanted to do was go say salam to uh, 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 to Hazrat Abbas and then ask permission to go see Imam Hussein. Uh, and she didn't get to do that. She didn't get to do that for, for two nights in a row. I, I, she was very upset. So I had an uncle in my group who, 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 who took me on the very first night. He was like, uh, uh, come with me. I've been here before. I'll show you. I'll show you the harem and, and, and bring you back. There, there's a lot of people here, so, uh, so stick with me and, uh, and we'll, we'll, go, we'll go say salam together. So we got to the hotel, we, we, we unpacked everything and us two set off straight away. Uh, I had no time to rest, us two went straight away. This was the first time me seeing the harem of, of, of Mullah Abbas right in front of me and with, with all the lights red and the amount of people outside let alone inside it was really manic uh, i just remember feeling so, so so sad and really upset because uh, uh, because i had always learned of the story of of hazrat abbas and and how sad it was when when he wasn't given permission to fight, but he was outnumbered thousands to one uh, and he was out to get water for the children and he was slain when he was getting water for the children uh, and that's something that uh, uh, that really saddens me just in general, let alone looking at the harem right in front of me and I, I just remember just breaking down before uh, I even got inside and, and by the time I, I did get inside I had tears flowing and 
uh, an uncle in our group, he 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 took me straight away. He, he was like, I know the best route. Remember the gate name, and and go, uh, uh, come on, let's go. So so we went in, and it was reminiscent of Imam Ali's harem, where there were so many people. It was a huge rush, uh, and uh, if you weren't careful, you would be, you, you, you would be trampled. So so you had to be careful, but or, but go say salam, touch the zadi, and, and come out again to, uh, to let someone else do it. And I, I remember trying a lot uh, and being heartbroken because because I, I couldn't touch the zadi uh, uh, and say salam. Uh, I knew a lot of people who managed to stay there, but I couldn't physically touch the zadi, let alone stay there to say salam. So, uh, so I remember being very heartbroken and and I somehow managed to lose the uncle in our group as well. So so we met up on, on the other side, uh, and he I tried a lot as well, but he couldn't either. So uh, so we're both very sad. We're both very tired, uh, and we went back. We we didn't get to say salam to Imam Hussein yet. I knew I had to keep on trying. So so I tried the day after, uh, so the so the day before Arba'in. And this time there were even more people, so, so I couldn't again. Uh, and then on Arabayin itself, it, it felt like uh, uh, I was upset about it, but but I knew that I could go back to my hotel room with, with a perfect view of uh, Hazrat Abbas's harem and, and read my prayers there. So, so sometimes I've done that, and sometimes I, I was allowed to read prayers in the harem due to the, there being a less amount of people uh, and, and, uh, and there'd be space, which I take instantly. So being in Gobala itself, the experience there compared to doing Urbain here is completely different. There, there is raw emotion, passion and just pure love for, for your mom being there when you can see the where, where, where you can see the harems, you can see the land, uh, you can see the distances between the the Khemaga for for the Bani Hashim uh, and where the different harems are and shrines or or makams and that is something that, that is heartbreaking. Well, when you take into account, where, which I did a few times, because we would go to to Makame. Eliasher, Abakame, Eliakber, and I, I went to Samra and Gazmain on the last day of our trip, just in general. But the distance between Imam Hussein's harem and uh, uh, and the Bani Hashim tents at uh, Amal Abbas is 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 something you can hear about if you're here. But but when you're there. Or standing right in the middle, you you feel you feel that pain. You you can see how far, how far Bibi Zainab stood and saw saw her loved ones in battle. You you can you you can physically feel the pain. Whereas here, you can't necessarily do that. Like like you can see pictures and get a imagination in your head, but whereas if you're there, you you, you will relive that memory for years to come, and that's something that is, is unique to Karbala and Iraq itself. You can hear about it, but once you experience it, it's something that, uh, that, you, that you will never forget. So after people had left after Arabayin, I was finally given the chance to go touch the Zadis of both Hazrat Abbas and Imam Hussein. Uh, I went to Hazrat Abbas first, I uh, touched the Zadi, done my salam, Cried a bit. Uh, we done a bit about them because because there was a lot less people there. And, uh, and then asked permission. Uh, we'll, we'll walk through Ben Al Harmain. I uh, got to Imam Hussein. Finally, the, there were more people there, but but I finally got to touch the daddy, which is something I I I've wanted to do for 17 years, and I finally got the chance to do. So I was overwhelmed with emotion, I was crying, I was, I, I had a smile on my face which was inappropriate but I was so happy to finally 
uh, to finally be given the chance to say salam properly and, and I, I won't forget that. Finally, the day arrived where I think it was four days after I rained where, where we had to come back to London. So, so, so we got to the airport six hours before our flight and everyone was just really upset that, uh, that we were leaving because we, we all wanted to stay. I remember uh, uh, me and my sister saying to each other that, that we wanted to live in Iraq, like, uh, uh, like we didn't want to come back. And then coming back to London where, where society was just completely different. Everyone got about their day and, and you've just come back from a uh, from a trip that has completely changed you as a person. You've come back more patient, more caring. You've come back with a different mindset on, on life. You're very understanding about things. For, for example, on the walk, you, you, you can finally get a brief understanding as to how the, uh, uh, the women of the camp felt going from city to city in those conditions because because you have kind of lived in those conditions that like walked for a long time. You, you, yeah, you've had shoes on your feet, clothes on, but, but you get a brief understanding. So coming back to London, you, well, where society is completely different, like, it's that like two different worlds. As so coming back now, I was more aware of my actions just in general. I was very, aware of how I was as a person, that like, uh, uh, I was aware of my faults because I, uh, they were outlined very quickly on the walk, how impatient I was, how, how I wasn't thinking about others, how I was thinking about myself, how, how my pain was, that like, uh, those faults were, were instantly noticed and, and I was working on them throughout the walk and I knew that that I came back more patient because I waited four days for four long days. Yeah, I was upset, but I finally got to touch Imam Hussein Zari. I waited three days for the Zari to be open again. I was a lot more kind towards my nan who was struggling throughout the whole the, the whole trip. I was a lot more caring about her, made sure she had or what she needed. I came back as a better person than I left. I would really encourage you guys to go because you uh, you build a, a better connection to your religion and, uh, and to your imam. You, you come back a better person than you left uh, and you are more aware of the faults that you have, uh, uh, that you had. Uh, 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 and you don't realise but you're working on them whilst you're there uh, uh, and you come back a better person uh, and you just act more mature and you feel more blessed as a person to, to have experienced those, those feelings uh, and that trip just in general because that's a once in a lifetime opportunity Urbain, that not many people get that chance to go uh, and you've had that uh, 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 and if you get that opportunity it, it's, it, it's something that you won't forget for a long time. If I was to summarise my whole journey in one sentence, it would be really tough. But, but what I will say is, I went in with an open mind. I, I had some crushing lows that, uh, that really tested me. I think that was my mom testing me, uh, uh, how strong I was. But, uh, but, uh, but I had some really positive highs as well. Uh, and those I will look back on and cherish forever. And I really hope I get the opportunity to go again and, and that uh, I'm called again because I would love to go. And it's, it's really surreal. <laughs>
حسین لبه این که یا حسین 